Hello, welcome to Breaking It All Down, I'm Count Zero. Well, it's time for another video game review this week. This time, I am finishing up with the Gears of War series with Gears of War 3. Um, since this game was another new, semi-recent release, I'm going to try and keep this spoiler light. And thus, I'll be talking more about gameplay and that sort of thing instead of doing my usual story-by-story, plot-point-by-plot point breakdown. Gears 3 is set three years after the conclusion of the second game. The COG government has collapsed, and humans on Sarah have become spread out into various separate camps, with the Delta Squad being on a converted freighter-slash-helicopter carrier, the Sovereign. However, things get shaken up for them when C former COG Chairman Prescott arrives with vital information. The COG at a secret research facility, codenamed Azura, which Adams Phoenix is at, and is working on a basically a weapon to destroy the new threat against humanity, the Lambent. Beings created out of, basically, the emulsion, which it turns out is alive. First, let's bring up the good stuff. All of my major problems with the narrative of the first couple of games are gone. With Gears of War 1 and 2, they have the habit of doing the second act secret project ass pull, where basically some top secret Black Project is pulled out of nowhere, which invalidates the entire pl um, plot of the first half of the game. That doesn't happen here. Yes, we get a secret project brought up, but that secret project comes up at the beginning, and that's what drives the plot from here. And when char the characters find out that this secret project was being kept from them, they are justifiably upset about this, rather than just accepting it or rolling with it, as with earlier games. Additionally, all the characters here are much more fleshed out. In particular, Cole, who was a character who I didn't particularly like much in earlier games, because he was basically engaging in a sort of Uncle Tom foolery with his wise cracking and being a smartass jock, that I didn't find him likable earlier. Here, he's fleshed out. We see his reactions kind of to the way the world has changed. We get some information from newspaper articles picked up in the environment on why he joined the COG, which fleshes him out even further, gives him some real backstory, and makes him more than a two-dimensional caricature. Dizzy also returns. I am not fond of the character of Dizzy, but a lot of his redneck stuff from earlier games has also been toned down dramatically, making him, again, a much more likable character than in Gears of War 2. On the gameplay side, my other major complaint with the first two games has also been addressed. In Gears 1 and 2, the gameplay basically consisted of series of survival sequences, where you're basically locked down in an area, fighting off waves of bad guys until the game said, okay, you've completed your objective, you've ripped this door, you've protected this group of soldiers, or what have you, and now you can move on. And that really served no purpose other than to pad the game out further. Instead of having a sense of momentum and urgency, it's a case of just stopping dead and just fighting off bunches of guys until the game says, all right, now you can go on. In this game, they've really addressed that fairly well by basically minimizing the number of survival sequences, and when they do come up, they fit really well under the circumstances of what the story calls for. And that really makes this game much more intense than just getting stuck behind cover until the game says you can come out now. On the minus side, the badass decay of the locusts in this game is complete. I would compare the fate of the locusts in terms of how threatening they are to the agents in The Matrix. In the first film, the agents were, well, as they said in the film, you don't fight them, you just run. And in the same way in Gears of War 1, the... Brumax were enemies that you just ran away from. There was no, you automatically lose battle against them. You just ran away from them in a cutscene. In the second game, you ended up fighting against several Brumax, but in all of these cases, you are using, well, heavy weapons. You're using a mortar, or you're using a tank cannon, or you're using assault rifles, not assault rifles, you're using uh, machine guns on mounted positions. Whereas here, you take on a Brumac with your standard assault rifle guns, and you kill it. Just, that's it. It dies like any other enemy with 
normal bullets. And that really ruins the threat of the Brumac, and to a certain degree the Locust as well. They're no longer threatening and intimidating when your standard weapons can take out the worst they can throw at you. Corpsers, Brumax, nothing really can stop you. And I could, on the one hand, I can understand them wanting to make this game bigger, better, more badass, even more than the last one was. But by having your enemy from the first two games be practically impotent in the face of your team really hurts the game. I'm disappointed about this turn. Finally, there's the whole matter of the game's new enemy faction, the Lambent. In this game, well, they are the new threatening enemies. And while I do appreciate having someone who is an actual threat in this game, considering how toned down the menace of the Locust are, I don't know if they totally went the right direction here. Is they don't have any of the sort of characterization of the Locust do. Is that the Locust have architecture for their buildings and their cities. And they talk. And even if they don't say much, even if it's just a grinder saying grind or a boomer going boom when they shoot at you at least they're saying something here there isn't that sense of actual character to them they're just weird looking critters that shoot stuff at you oftentimes for that matter they're made actually a little too difficult they went too far in the other direction they have enemies where for example they have a headstock that shoots stuff at you and if you don't kill them by shooting at this glowing area on the headstock, then what happens is the head stays alive and then chases after your party members before blow blowing up, which doesn't make them necessarily super menacing, it just makes them more obnoxious. Additionally, we have the l Lambent with their own version of the grub holes from the earlier games. With the Locust grub holes, basically, all you really got from them in terms of for what they looked like and how to take them out, was a hole in the ground which locusts climbed out of until you hit the preset limit of locusts or until you threw a grenade in there. Destroying them, once you got the grenade there, was fairly straightforward. It wasn't a case of having the wrong angle or that sort of thing on it. It's just getting close enough to land that grenade. With the Lambent, on the other hand, we have the whole matter of the Lambent stock. Each stock has a little bunch of kind of blisters on it that spout out lambent troops until they hit the preset limit, much of the grub holes. However, these stocks can only be destroyed by shooting them. The problem is, is if your character's angle is wrong to the stock, you can't hit it. So you have to maneuver your way around to get to it. The problem is then, is if the stock is basically in a position where to get to one of these blisters, you have to be right on top of it, then you can't take out that one blister until you've hit the preset kill limit, which really ruins the effect of what made the grub holes work. With the grub holes, a skilled player could get through the game by fighting less enemies through careful use of grenades. Here, there is no such way to go around this. Yes, you can shoot some of the blisters, but they take a lot of bullets, and if you have facing enough stocks at once, you are going to be fighting tons of guys. It makes it way too easy to become overwhelmed. So, honestly, I think that the grub holes in particular were probably a better gameplay mechanism, and I really wish they picked something similar to that, or closer to that, for the Lambent, instead of the stalks and their blister pustule thingies. This is a very good game. The gameplay is solid, the story is an excellent conclusion to the trilogy, and the multiplayer, what I was able to get into online, was fairly decent. I would definitely recommend picking this game up, particularly if you enjoyed the first two games in the series. I would say that this isn't as good as Deus Ex Human Revolution. This didn't blow my mind in any particular way, but I did enjoy this game immensely. I definitely recommend that you check this out. Next time is an off week, so because I'm doing school work this term um, I'm going to be doing a little less of the in-depth game stuff for the future I have one other game review lined up next week 
will probably be a film review or that or a comic review. So you can expect some more of that and more stuff like that in the future once I get past my next game review. As for my next game review in two weeks, I'll be doing a review of El Shaddai Ascension of the Metatron. You can look forward to that. Until next time, I'm Count Zero. Thanks for watching.